Okay, so what I'd like to do is kind of do something a little bit different on this one. So we're we're still kind of talking about the graphing, but you know, in the graphing we're looking at the characteristics. And one of the characteristics we haven't talked about is identifying the x and the y intercepts of the following functions on the interval. So this kind of again goes back to exactly what we've talked about in our functions unit, identifying x and y intercepts. And the important thing is we're only looking on the interval of 0 to 2 pi, which is basically like the revolution of the unit circle because obviously if we go beyond on that we're going to have repetitions of all the x-intercepts, except for the y-intercept. That's basically the y-intercept is going to occur where it's going to occur. Um, so let's just kind of review a couple things that we you know want to look for as far as identifying the value um, for the x and the y-intercepts. Remember that the x-intercept occurs when y is going to be equal to zero. So basically what we're going to do is we're just going to replace y with zero and we're going to think of two sine of x plus one and basically just kind of find the value of x that's going to make that true. So I'll subtract a one on both sides, negative one equals two sine of x, then divide by two, divide by two, and I have negative one half equals the sine of x. Now, so basically what I'm looking for is the sine of what angle is going to equal negative one half. And again, this is very important for me to understand, like I got to look at the unit circle between zero and two pi, right? We're not looking for all the values where sine of x is equal to negative one half. We're just looking between the values of zero and two pi. So when we go ahead and take a look at this, and again, I also shared the, um, the calculator here so we can kind of like verify these values. And if we think about the sine of x is equal to negative one half, there's basically two angles or two angles that are going to, you know, make this true. So we look at this. Or sorry, these are the x-intercepts, right? Not the y-intercept. Duh, I'm thinking I like it. So um, the two angles that are going to make this equation true between zero and two pi. X, let's go and do two pi. So here is the unit circle. Negative one half is going to be these two angles down here, and they both have a reference angle pi over six. So my two angles here between zero and two pi are going to be x is going to equal, uh, let's see, seven pi over six and eleven pi over six, and that's just between zero and two pi. Now, obviously, our intercepts repeat on the function, but we're just looking on between zero and two pi. In this next one, to find the y-intercept, remember the y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. So therefore, all I'm going to do is plug in 0 in for x, sine of 0 plus 1 half. Um, so therefore, sine of 0, if you remember the angle 0, then that's going to be 0. So that would be y is equal to 1. So that means this graph is going to cross at 1. Uh, the y-intercept at 1, and therefore it's, then it's going to have two x-intercepts at 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. So let's go ahead and check that out, see if that is correct. Okay, so you can see this x-intercept is at 0, 1, right? And you can see we have two x-intercepts um, at 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6. Now, obviously, there's more of these intercepts, right? And they repeat um, a distance of 2 pi, but we're just looking from the interval 0 to 2 pi. So again, just kind of going back to that understanding of finding the x and y intercepts uh, from functions, we can go and do that with trigonometric functions as well. So let's go and do it with the next one, x, y equals cosine of 2x. So I'll say x-intercept is when y is equal, I don't know why I'm writing that, I already wrote that once. So let's just find the x-intercept. So I have zero is equal to the cosine of two x. Now this one's kind of interesting again. We wanna basically figure out the cosine of like, what angle when I multiply it by two is obviously gonna give me the cosine is equal to zero. So again, kind of thinking of my, like my unit circle, I think about, well, I know that the cosine is equal to, you know, zero. Let's see, cosine is equal to zero at, um, I can just say, you know, the cosine of x is equal to zero at x is equal to um, pi halves and three pi halves. But again, remember, these angles need to be multiplied by two here, right? So um, therefore, 
or I'm sorry, we need to basically have these angles being divided by or multiplied by two is still going to give us this pi halves. So a couple of different ways we can kind of look at this. It's, you know, we know that cosine of x equals to zero for these two angles, right? So we need them when they're multiplied by two to give us this. So what we can do is just rewrite this as two x equals pi halves and 2x equals 3 pi over 2. Because again, what we're trying to do is figure out when these angles are going to, or when this is going to equal the pi half. So therefore, we had x is equal to pi over 4, and x is equal to 3 pi over 4. So those are going to be my two x-intercepts. Before I go ahead and confirm, let's just find the y-intercept real quick. So the y-intercept is when x is equal to 0. So y is equal to cosine of 2 times 0. And the cosine of 0 is going to be 1. Okay, so the y-intercept is 1, and the cosine of 2x is equal to that pi over 4. Now, another way you can kind of think about this is, really quick, we know that the period of this function, right? So here is like, here's another way we can think about this. So the cosine function, without any transformations, 1, 2, negative 1, and this goes to 2 pi. So the cosine function looks something like this, right? And the minimum value occurs at pi, and then these zeros, the original x-intercepts, occur at pi halves and 3 pi halves. So that's something that we already know. Now, if we change the period here, if our new period is going to be See here, we have this b, right? So it's basically now been changed to 2 pi over 2, which is now pi. So now basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this graph and I am condensing it from here to here. So what you're going to see is this new x-intercept is down below here, and then now these are my two new x-intercepts. So and basically, if you take pi halves and divide it by 2, that's where you're getting this pi over 4, and that's where you're getting this 3 pi over 4, all right? So you can see, like, it's basically being scrunched here in half um, on everything, and that's where all those values are going to be coming into play. Now, let's go ahead and check the work again. Okay, and you can see my y-intercept is, again, at 1. And then my two x-intercepts are at pi four and three pi or four. And then I probably should have mentioned that, which I kind of forgot, which goes on to that point, is there's actually more of these between zero and two pi, right? We have five pi or four and seven pi or four. So again, what that plays into this, which, so this helps us find these two values. But then again, what we need to look at is this graph can continue, right? This graph, uh, let's do it again. We can do actually two full periods between zero and two pi. See that? So we are, by changing the period of this function, now what we have done is we are allowing two full periods. So now we have these two graphs. Now how do we figure out these points? Well, initially, when you look at the original function, every one of these x-intercept is a distance of a period away from, like the add 2 pi, add 2 pi, but now my period is a pi. So to find these other two x-intercepts, all I'm simply going to do is take x equals pi over 4 and then add it to pi, which would be or plus or minus pi. So therefore, that will give me x equals pi over 4 plus 4 pi over 4, and x equals pi over 4. Um, not pi over 4, not plus or minus. What am I doing? You're going to add pi, and then you also need to do um, x equals this other one, 3 pi over 4 plus pi. So that's 3 over pi over 4 plus 4 pi over 4. And that is going to give you 5 pi over 4 and going to give you 7 pi over 4. So my solutions here, the number of x-intercept, there's actually 4. And again, you can look at these solutions and see. Like, there are 4 solutions between 0 and 2 pi, right? Because obviously, when we get to 6, 6.28 is like 2 pi. So you can see that there are these 4 solutions happening there. So x is going to equal 5 pi over 4, and x is going to equal 7 pi over 4. All right. So now let's go and get into this last example. Uh, tangent uh, with tangent. Tangent is equal to x plus pi over 4. So again, let's just kind of work on the x-intercept first. 
Axe intercept is when y is equal to zero, so zero equals the tangent of x plus pi over four. And this might be a little confusing, right? Thinking like, well, you know, where, what's happening here, right? Like, how am I going to, what values are gonna make sense of this? So again, I think it's easiest to kind of look at our initial period to kind of make sense of it. So we know the initial period, the graph has an x-intercept at zero. So negative pi halves, negative pi halves, right? So if I take this graph and I shift it pi over four, pi halves to the fourth, well, actually, forget about that for a second. The next x-intercept, right, is going to be pi distance away because remember these all have a period of pi, correct? So to find all these values, all I'm gonna do is if I shift this graph pi over four to the left, right, that's pi over four to the left, so that's negative pi over four. Now this is at pi, and this one's at pi over four, but rather than trying to do pi minus pi over four, let's just take negative pi over four, x equals negative pi over four. Now that's not between zero and two pi, so that's not a solution, that's why I have it in red. But if I add pi to it, which will take me to this next point, that will be between zero and two pi. And let's go ahead and rewrite that, which is going to equal to negative pi over four plus four pi over four, which is equal to three pi over four. And there you go. So x is equal to three pi over four. And now if I add four pi over four over to the, if I add four pi over four to that again, to find this next point, like, uh, not that, let's use black. See, if I do this again, so here's there, there's zero. This would be at pi. This would be at two pi, right? So what that means, guys, is I have another x-intercept right here that is just gonna be just less than four pi, right? So I have these angles here, all there. All these asymptotes got moved. So everything got shifted over. So now, all what is it? Well, all I gotta do is add pi again to it. So if I take three pi over four and add pi over to it again, four pi over four, that's gonna give me seven pi over four. All right, and then now last but not least to find the y-intercept, I'm just gonna plug zero in for x. So I'll have y is equal to the tangent of zero plus pi over four, which is basically just ask me what is the tangent of pi over four, which we know is going to again equal one. So I have two x-intercepts at three pi over four and seven pi over four, as well as one. Let's go ahead and check our answer on that one. And you can see that my uh, x, y intercept is at zero comma one. And then I have two at three pi over four and seven pi over four. And then after that, we are past two pi. So, um, that is just a way, and again, we'll, we're gonna be talking much more about this. This is really kind of more of a, um, just kind of an introduction to identifying the intercepts. Uh, remember, applying the same operation works. Um, but you know, just kind of looking at some different ideas here, looking at the values that make the equation true from zero to two pi, um, looking at understanding what operations are happening with the graph. So, you know, this was easy to solve just by looking at the unit circle. This one is easier to comprehend by understanding what the period doing by compressing the graph, we're allowed to have more solutions inside of there. And then this one's helpful to understand the transformations as well and seeing what that's doing to the graph. Um, but again, like the math that we're doing the is still going to be exactly the same, you know, x intercept y equals zero, y intercept x equals zero. So now let's just go and get into the last one, which would just be writing the equation of our trigonometric function.